become new. They're new. It's a newness because how many of us, when, when we have a furniture in our home, we want some kind of upgrade. We don't always want the same type of furniture. We don't always want the same type of vehicle. We don't always want the same position on your job. You want some type of upgrade. You want some type of newness that comes. And then we see, uh, even when God was promising his exiled people, uh, in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, uh, verse 18 and 19, again, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, we see uh, where God was looking upon the people of Israel, and they were exiled at this time, kicked out, disobedient people uh, that did not follow his instruction. They're put out, they're exiled, and the Bible says, he sends word to them, saying, remember ye not the former things, forget the past. Don't, don't, don't you dwell because that, that's, that's a dangerous place to be in where the enemy wants to keep you in your past. He wants to keep you of your, remind you of your failures, remind you of your shortcomings, remind you how it didn't work out, remind you how other, in, not even in your life, but other people's lives, it did not work out. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. There's going to be a newness. There's going to be a reviving. There's going to be a strengthening with a new thing. Now it shall come spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. And watch this. Many times we assume that the times for newness that generally uh, come to our mind, and uh, it may not be everybody, but where I see many people try to, try to reevaluate or look for newness I see it around their birthday time. Birthdays come, you got a new, uh, this is the 20th chapter now. This yeah. chapter 22, this yeah. chapter 27, uh, th 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 it's about to be a new thing. We see it not only then in birthdays, but we see it even when funerals happen. That's when you get that time to really develop it and, and really just begin to let your mind wonder of this could have been you. This could have been your dream that was stopped. This could have been your life that ended and we begin to look and begin to allow ourselves to remember the dreams that have, we have allowed to die, the, the thoughts and the visions that God has given that we put on the back burner. But not only then, especially when we come to this new year. It's something about the new year that, that, that comes that gives us an opportunity for new and, and, and says it's a fresh start, it's a clean slate. Uh, but I've come to tell you what's so amazing is that we don't have to wait until 12.01 a.m on the new years to start anew. Can I tell you that when you see some areas in your life where you see lack, the next moment can be your new time. The next moment, the next minute, the next day, the next hour can be your new time. And we see it in scripture. I wanna go through a couple of them on tonight. I, I wanna get, you know, first you get me Ruth, the first chapter, verse 19 through 20. We wanna talk about a few examples on tonight. Ruth 1, verse 19 through 20. And the Bible declares, it says, uh, So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is that Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty God has dealt very bitterly with me. And I want you to understand who this really is. This is, uh, uh, first, the, the book is talking about Ruth. It's talking about Ruth, who is a Moabite woman. She's a Moabite woman who marries a Judean uh, immigrant named Mah Malone. He, he, he had a mother named Naomi. And when he dies, now Ruth is a, a, a childless widow familiar with the story where it tells us uh, that not only did she decide that she was going to go with her mother-in-law and not even go with her people, that alone tells us she was something new. And how many times in your life have you evaluated yourself or looked at relationships or looked at people in your life and said, I want something new. I'm tired of things ending the way it has ended. I'm tired of things, react, uh, things happening the way it's been happening. It tells us that they go to Bethlehem. They recognize her, and she even changes her identity. 
Don't call me Naomi no more. Call me Mara. Because God, I, I'm not even worthy of that. And God dealt with me in a bad way. He, he dealt with me bitterly. And has everybody, anybody ever felt that way? That when it seemed like you should be prospering, it seemed like everybody else around you is prospering. It seems yeah. like you should have the best. This should be the best years of your life. This yeah. is, should be the time where you should have the most joy, have the most peace. And it seems like God is dealing with you bitterly. She says uh, in this portion that God changed my name. I'm changing my name. But God has dealt with me bitterly. But not only did they begin in a new location, not only did Naomi assume a new identity, but so did Ruth. The Bible tells us in Ruth 1 and 16, verse 17, when Ruth came to Naomi telling her, I, I'm not going to go anywhere else. I'm going to be with you. She said, entreat me not to leave you. Don't make me leave you. And return following thee. I, uh, where you go, I'm going to go. And where you sleep, uh, lodges, I will lodge. Where you sleep, I'm going to sleep. Where you stay, I'm going to stay. And your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also in all but death part thee and me. In other words, not only did Naomi get an opportunity for a new beginning, but Ruth says, I need something new too. And can I tell you that that's how one way where we can witness to somebody else. Do you know that somebody's watching you online? Somebody's watching you, especially when you say you're a Christian, say that you go to this church, say you sing in this choir, say that you do all of these, they post anything spiritual on your social media. People are watching you and, and you'll never know it in any case. She says, your people will be my people. Your God was going, is going to be my God. And there was change in that situation. There was a new beginning for her. And we don't just see that with her. i got one more example before we get to the scripture. We hear about Saul. He turned his name to Paul. We, we see where the scripture tells us that not only was he one that persecuted the church, he was an extremely zealous Jew who believed that those who followed Jesus were blaspheming God. You couldn't call on the name of Jesus around him because what he would do is he would hunt for the followers of Jesus so he could arrest them and kill them. But one day on the road to Damascus, the Bible says that a light shined round about him. Nobody else saw the light but him. He falls to the earth and the Bible says he hears a voice from Jesus and from that day, there's a new beginning. There's a transformation. There's a change that happens in their life. And can I tell you, one thing that we've got to learn from new beginnings is that many times they happen when we just expect them. Sometimes they're voluntary on our behalf. Sometimes your situation, your new beginning can start like Ruth, uh, where you can make the decision, your God is going to be my God, your people are going to be my people. I'm making the decision to start anew. But sometimes God can step in, God can send a word to you to let you know you'll never be the same from this day forward. So we get to our main scripture on tonight. We get to Matthew, uh, the ninth chapter, verse 9 through 13. And I want to read it in its entirety. It says, and I'm reading from the NASB version. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's office. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. Then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and began dining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and the sinners? What are they doing? But when Jesus heard this, he said, it is, it is not those who are healthy who need a position. But those who are sick now go and learn what this means. I desire compassion rather than sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sin. And can I tell you, let, let, let's break this down a little bit. Who is Matthew? I'm sure a few of our youth can tell us on tonight, but Matthew was a tax collector. And uh, during the time when Israel was occupied by Roman authority, at this time Romans would come and put in their own authority. They they were ones that set the rules in this situation. So the Romans believed who's better to get money from a Jew 
than a Jew. In, 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 in layman's term, I'm going to use your people to do your own. So he says, in, in, in other words, if, if, if I'm, we're, we're not going to set a Roman here to steal from you. We're going to give a, a, a Jew an opportunity to sit before you and take from you and give them a little incentive on their behalf. Therefore, they, uh, they used their own people to collect tax taxes. This meant that tax collectors were really traitors. You, you know, if you've got anybody, if your family uh, does something that's against you, if your best friend all, all of a sudden does something that's not in your best favor, what you label them as, I don't know, I can't talk to them. They're traitors. They're, they're not putting my best foot forward. Uh, they're, they're not putting my inter best interest at heart. And that's what was going on with these tax collectors. And then it says anything they collected above that amount was their oh, so the, the taxes was ten dollars. And they collected twenty, ten would go to the tax collectors. So they looked at them as thieves. Why am I saying all this? Many of you already know these things, but can I preface this question to you? If he's a thief, if he's a traitor, why was Jesus coming? The Bible says that Jesus, he, he comes, he, he went on from there. He saw a man named Matthew. He was sitting at the tax collector's office. And the Bible says, he says to him, follow me. Now, many of us, we, we, we can look at the story as Jesus begins to pick the 12 disciples. We can see Peter. We can see John. We can see uh, these other gentlemen who had some good qualities about themselves. At least Peter was a fisherman. That, that, that seems logical if you're going to be traveling up, at least get somebody that can catch something. It seems logical. Yeah, you can work with his attitude. Yeah, you can get all these things squared. But why would you bring on someone who people hate? I come to tell you on tonight that new beginnings don't just start for you. They're not just limited to you. They're not just limited to me. But can I tell you that there's somebody in your life that needs a fresh start? That needs grace from you. That needs a little bit more long suffering than you even allowed. You you close the door, God. Is saying, There's a new beginning. There, 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 there are some relationships that need to be afresh in your life. And the Bible says that not only does He call him, saying, "Follow me," that you obey. He gets up. He gets up and he follows him. Mm. He gets up and he follows him. And the Bible says that when he follows him, it happened that Jesus was reclining at the table in the house. And then many tax collectors and sinners, they came and began dining with Jesus and his disciples. Now this is where it gets tricky because if many of us saw somebody went out to dinner or out to eat or or, or, or on a social media post with somebody that's not too favorable, somebody that didn't have a good background, somebody that didn't have a good reputation, our response is going to be similar to these Pharisees. Why are you eating with them? <laughs> what we'll do is get the point. Did you see what so and so posted? Did you did you see who they were out to eat with? Why would they even associate with somebody like? This is what's going on with Jesus. Jesus is now facing this. He's saying, I, 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 I'm just here talking to the people. Everybody needs salvation. But what they're saying is, why is he eating with sinners? And not even sinners. They put, they put the sinner on one category and the tax collector on the other. How many times in your life have you disassociated sinners from a specific sin? These are sinners right here. But this is a homosexual. These are the sinners right here, but <laughs> that murderer is on a whole different level. Yeah, come on now. Oh, this is this, these are sin. This is sin right here, but this is oh, this is on a whole different level right here. Mm, my God. That's what the Pharisees did. That's what Sadducees did. That's what these scribes were known to do. They were openly righteous, thinking everybody ain't nobody perfect but us. The Bible says they see him. Say, why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and the sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician. If you got it together, 
naturally, if you ain't got no call, so your physical, that ear, and you, that, that's about it, you don't need anything else. If you're healthy, if you're not having any issues, if you don't have any swelling, if you don't have any pain, what are you going to the doctor for? Because generally, people that go to the doctor need help. Jesus is saying, I, I didn't come to help the people that are healthy. I didn't come to help only the people that know how to say amen. I'm not coming to just help the people that know church protocol. I am coming to even help those that are lost, those that are sick, those that have issues. Not only did we need a new beginning, but there's somebody out in that world that needs a fresh start. There's somebody out there in that on your job, on, uh, at that grocery store you constantly visit, on that telephone that you overlook. There's somebody that needs a new beginning. Matthew had a reputation on the basis of the job he held. What's your reputation? What's your reputation? And many of us, sometimes we, we, we put that same, but it's not illogical that they would uh, treat somebody a certain way because of the job they have. See how some people treat police? I'm not, I'm not talking to the public. No, I mean, that, 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 because of their occupation. Let, let you get a bill collect the call. And it says, spam likely. How, how nice are you going to answer that phone? because of their occupation. So it's not irregular, it's not anything that's abnormal for them to treat somebody different because of their occupation. The danger is when you call yourself a Christian, yeah, yeah. when you call yourself a child of God, and you're having these biases, especially when it comes to some, uh, some realizing that there's a soul on the end of, the end of that. Moment. There's a soul on the other side of the situation. Jesus says, follow me. Now they're eating together. Understand that eating with someone in this culture is a sign of friendship. You know how we can see old friends or uh, find someone on social media or old classmates and say, let's go grab lunch. Let, let's go grab coffee. You don't really have no association with them. You're just trying to catch up and see how they've been. In this culture, if you're eating with someone, you've got a, a friendship with them. They see Jesus doing something abnormal, and they call it out. The Bible says, he says, it's not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. Now go and learn what this means. I desire compassion rather than sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners. The same way we need grace, somebody else needs it. The same way we need compassion, Somebody else needs it. The same way God had to be long-suffering with us. Can I tell you that you don't have to be long-suffering with others? You can't be so quick to write people off. You can't be so quick to throw in the towel because somebody needs a new beginning. I've got this last portion to show you. There's a few things that I want you to understand in this bit. A quick list. I'm sure our media team will put this up. A quick list of six things. One, I want you to understand that you can't help others grow closer to Christ if you are not right with Him yourself. There's nothing else. So many times we're ready to roll There's up our nothing sleeves else and there. we're ready to go forth and do exactly what He's called for us to do. But can I tell you that you cannot help others grow closer to Christ if you are not right with Him for yourself? If you are not totally surrendered and desiring to follow him in your everyday or in every area of your life, you cannot do it. You cannot do it. Number two, I want you to understand that you can't disciple someone to grow closer to Jesus if you are not growing closer to him. So not only can you not help them, but also you cannot disciple them. <coughs> 